After nearly 50 years at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, the 355th Wing has begun divesting its A-10 Thunderbolt II aircraft fleet. A-10C Aircraft 82648 was retired from service at Davis Monthan and transited from the 354th Fighter Squadron to the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group for final maintenance procedures and display preparation for the Davis Monthan, where hundreds of retired aircraft are stored. The A-10 has been the symbol of Davis Monthan Air Force Base for many years, and it will continue to be a symbol for the airmen of DM, a symbol of their commitment, excellence, and service said U.S. Air Force Colonel Scott Mills, 355th Wing Commander and A-10 pilot. For now, we're divesting a single squadron during the summer-fall timeframe 2024. The U.S. Air Force plans to divest the entire fleet of A-10 aircraft within the next three to five years. Due to the divestment, pilots and maintainers at Davis Monthan will move on to the F-35 aircraft. There will always be a job for maintainers. It may not be on the A-10, but the Air Force needs maintainers to sustain air power, said U.S. Air Force Colonel Clarence McRae, 355th Maintenance Group Commander. Perhaps the biggest draw of future maintainers will be in the F-35 community. Airplanes are still going to break, and we are still going to fix them. Initially designed for close air support, or CAS, by Fairchild Republic, an aircraft and aerospace manufacturing company, the first A-10 model could carry bombs and rockets on 11 pylons and featured a 30mm GAU-8A rotary cannon protruding from the nose of the aircraft. The plane is unique in its diverse ability to support our ground team not only with precision munitions from a distance, like we're doing as we speak in the Middle East, but also with scalpel-like accuracy using the GAU-8 gun under the most difficult environments imaginable, said U.S. Air Force Colonel Razvan Radescu, 355th Operations Group Commander. The plane, coupled with our high-level training standards, are the reason so many of our joint and coalition forces returned home to fight another day. Because they had A-10s overhead covering their six or employed weapons to save their lives when nobody else could, he added. The first model of the aircraft to arrive at Davis Monthan was an A-10A on March 2, 1976. This model was assigned to the 355th Tactical Fighter Wing, arrived here in 1971, and replaced the Vought A7D Corsair flown by the 355th TFW. The 355th TFW was later reclassified as the 355th Tactical Fighter Training Wing, prompting the 354th, 357th, and 358th Fighter Squadrons to train U.S. Air Force pilots on the A-10A aircraft. While the aircraft's maneuverability and munitions, including the mighty GAU-8, make it overwhelmingly effective on the battlefield, it's the pilot that makes it special, Mills said. The pilot has been trained to care about and understand the young Army infantrymen on the ground. They are the mission. With the divestment, Davis Monthan plans to expand its rescue footprint which may lead to the additional utility of the HC-130 aircraft and the HH-60W helicopter. Airframes expected to arrive from the Air Force Special Operations Command include the MC-130 and OA-1K. From an ops personnel standpoint, this divestment arguably allows a more expeditious stand-up of the F-35, even as that program continues to struggle with a variety of delays, said Radescu. The U.S. Air Force has long butted heads with Congress over plans for the retirement of its aging A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft, flying cannons also known as Warthogs. Last year, service leadership stressed to legislators that it's time to move on because the warplane is less valuable than it was 40 years ago and doesn't scare China. 
The Department of the Air Force posture statement about the 2024 fiscal year budget outlines specific divestments that the service branch wants to undertake to continue modernizing and adapting to relevant threats. The document requests that Congress allow for the retirement of 42 A-10 Warthogs because the aircraft does not deter or survive against our pacing challenge, and we need to move forward. Frank Kendall, the Secretary of the Air Force, reiterated it last year during a House Armed Services Committee hearing on the service's budget request when Ranking Member Representative Adam Smith asked Kendall if he could outline some of the programs that the Air Force plans to divest and why Congress must avoid getting in the way. I'll start with the A-10, Kendall responded. It's over 40 years old. In its time, it was a great aircraft. It served us well. I advocated for that program for a long time, but it doesn't scare China. It still has some limited utility, the secretary added, but we have to get on with things which are going to be more capable relative to the threat. For years, Congress has blocked the Air Force's attempts to retire the A-10, but in late 2022, lawmakers finally allowed 21 warthogs to be retired and sent to a boneyard. The retirements will curb the fleet of A-10s to 260, a number that could plummet even more with the service's latest request. Given the aircraft's reputation as a tank killer, there was talk last year about the possibility of sending the A-10s to Ukraine. Still, the conclusion was that they likely wouldn't survive the high-intensity fight in which neither side had air superiority. The aircraft is decades old and probably needs to be faster for higher-end threat environments, but it can still pack a punch. A February 2022 exercise at the Nevada Test and Training Range showed that A-10Cs still had formidable firing power. They could knock out even modern tanks equipped with explosive reactive armor. And even though they're on their way out, the Air Force still uses them. During a training exercise in December, the Air Force practiced strafing runs with A-10s, resulting in the aircraft executing impressive flight maneuvers and gun runs. Despite the announcement of retiring the A-10, Air Force officials clarified that A-10s were still considered valuable assets, mainly thanks to their well-trained and prepared pilots. Though questions remain about how well the new fighter aircraft can do this, the Air Force's F-35As are expected to pick up the A-10's close air support mission capability.